That's a hundred percent. All right, so today we're heading to Hastings. I have 100% charged the car because I'm pretty sure Hastings is a hundred odd mile each way journey and there's nowhere much to charge in Hastings, which is something I want to talk about. Just find where we're going on the old sat nav. There we go. I do like the way on the Tesla sat nav you can scroll back as far as you like through your history of places you've been. That is quite handy. I'm sure it's like that with every sat nav, but certainly I like being able to go back to. I mean, last time I went here was apparently May. So, right, anyway, let's have a look. What have we got here? 99 miles. Right, so with faffing, 100. Um, yeah, that's going to be. It's going to take a while, certainly. And unfortunately for me, this car fully charged is only 229 miles now, which is a reduction from, it was 242 when I very first bought the car. So we have lost a pretty solid 13 miles of range, which I work out to be a little over 10%, which isn't bad because we're now on 115,000 miles and over five years now I've had the car. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, I think it's time to uh, hit the road and then and we'll talk a little bit about what's been going on with Tesla and their batteries because the older 85s, I've heard stories of a software update removing sort of 30 odd miles worth of range, which is not ideal. I haven't had that problem and I've had all the software updates, so that's, that's fine. Yeah, I've, I've got a theory as to what's going on there. Last time I ever carried the bags from where I parked the car here because these bags are enormously heavy. I mean it is my own fault why they're so heavy. In fact, let me show you one of the main things that made one of my bags very, very heavy is this little gizmo, which I love. It's a built-in 150 watt hour battery with a quick charge 3 amp. 5 volt USB, two 2 amp 5 volt USBs, an integrated light, and a 120 watt pure sine wave inverter. Yes, so it's just mobile power station basically. I can plug it into my folding solar panel. Really love this thing. Came from China, well, bought it on Amazon, Got it shipped from China. Anyway, I'm gonna go and have a coffee. recording oh, yeah, that's good so my battery has gone down I originally when I first got it it had 242 miles on it as I said mm. now it's on 229 at a hundred percent there were some cars when I picked mine up or actually most of the other ones that said 247 miles of available range when they were brand new so let's pretend for a second that that's what my car either said or should have said maybe there was a calibration thing going on so 247 is the new range and now five years down the line 115,000 miles we're on 229 leading to about seven and a half percent drop in range but that's not half bad for five years and that number of miles I mean if it did that again over the next five years then I would have got what I consider to be a very good lifetime range out of that one car. Absolutely fantastic in fact. I am quite careful with my battery however. I try to keep it in the middle. I very rarely charge it to 100%. The only reason I charged it to 100% on this trip is because charging in Hastings is a bit of a nightmare. We might look at that tomorrow 
if I make a video tomorrow, we might look at the difficulties associated with charging in this sort of space and, and what the government could potentially do to try and you know, help level the playing field for people who want to own an EV and don't necessarily have off-street parking readily available. So, that's tomorrow. We'll come back to that. Back to my battery. I don't like it to be very highly charged. I very rarely, I think only once went into the last 10%. I've only charged it up to 100% as many times as I can count on one hand, pretty much. Maybe, I suppose by now, maybe we're up to like seven times over five years. So nothing to worry about there. And so consequently, my battery's aging in a pretty predictable way, I think. I think what happened was they had that fire, I think it was in Shanghai, wasn't it, with the uh, Model S 85 kilowatt hour battery. And that kind of, I think, might have spooked them into thinking, well, perhaps these batteries have aged more than people think. Because let's face it, most people have been extremely pleasantly surprised by how well Tesla's batteries have aged. It's not been a case of, you know, when I bought my first Nissan Leaf, they were talking about, well, it shouldn't be less than 70% after three years, although they wouldn't even warranty that. You know, 70% remaining after three years, mm, try 92.5% remaining after five years of pretty decent miles. That's more like it. And that's kind of been everyone's experience with Tesla. The batteries have aged really well. I just think perhaps some of them might have aged a little bit better than they should have, or at least be reporting better aging than they should have. Because of course, the thing about estimating a battery's capacity is that's exactly what it is. It's an estimate. The only way to know 100% for sure is to run it all the way down to nothing and then charge it all the way up to 100% and then run all that power back out again and then you've got a full amount of how much power the battery takes, how much power comes back out. It allows you to answer all those little questions and then estimate in a much more accurate way what the charge is at a given voltage and, and a given load as well because that's what makes it particularly difficult with these, you know, with battery, you know, range estimates telling up how much power is in a battery, it does very much depend what kind of load is on the battery as to where the voltage is. Obviously, if I had a car and I suddenly lost 30 miles of range, I would definitely not be happy. I do wonder, however, whether they ever really had that 30% or whether they just thought they had it, but they not actually tried to charge it up to 100% and then run it down to zero. I bet those cars would have stopped at about 25, 30 miles left on the clock and it would have gone, oh, I've run out of power, boom, immediately, straight to zero. And honestly, I wouldn't want that. It's not worth having a number that just makes you feel better. It is fascinating watching the way the fleet of Tesla batteries ages over time and sort of how they dispel certain myths and, you know, maybe reinforce other ones about the way that batteries age. It's certainly clear to me that, you know, they can be created and used long term. You know, they don't have to be something which is renewed every two or three years, which was always one of those central sort of things that people would, you know, say, oh, that's a good reason why electric cars will never make it. Uh, every three years you'll need a new battery and it'll cost more than the car. Luckily, it doesn't seem to be working out that way. Right, I think we're going to take Jasper to the playground now. I hope you've enjoyed today's vlog post. If you have, remember to like it, share it, subscribe if you haven't already. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter if you don't already, and I'll see you in the next episode of my vlog. Bye. And um, just in case I don't get around to actually shooting any more of this video, I'm gonna say goodbye right now. I might just change my position on the seat though, so that I can make it look like I filmed this later. You know, after if I take B-roll, you'll see what I mean.